welcome back guys this is our next tutorial for the devops so in this tutorial we will install the docker and then we will deploy our bar file into the docker container so in the last lecture till last lecture we will created our two machine linux a machine and the linux b machine and we will generated the bar file on the linux a machine and then we will copy that bar file using the linux b machine so we just use that ssh artifact and then we have copy the bar file so we have the bar file ready now we have to install the docker and then we have to deploy a create a docker container and then we have to deploy the particular bar file so before starting first we understand what is the docker and why is required for that so basically docker is software is called used for the virtualization so if you have if, knowing the concept of the docker it provide the virtualization and inside the docker we can create a multiple containers so each containers is isolated from the another one so the each container you have some set of software and some set of dependency and in the few days you want some application is there and that wants some other software and other dependencies so you will create a separate container for that and you can deploy the application there so using that basically we can maintain the virtualization and the using the container we can deploy multiple set of the application with different different combinations of the software so that's why to maintaining the dependencies of the software and version compatibility we are using the docker here to install the docker it's very simple here the command is yum install docker so we have to install the docker first and then we have to create the container so for that just type the command yum install docker so in my case is already available so if you are not there in your machine that you have to run that particular command and then it will install successfully and after the installation you have to go to the inside the etc and group and then you have to check the group for the docker is present or not if you have successfully installed then it will create for that let's open that particular file etc slash group get is the command for the opening the file and you are able to see the docker is available so if you have successfully installed docker then it will present inside that particular group just check inside the etc group file and then you are able to see the docker entry there after successful installation then we have to provide the permission to the ec2 user to use the docker because we have installed the docker as a root user and in the linux if we install the software as a root user then no other user will use that particular software so if you want to use the docker as a ec2 user as well then you have to provide the permission to ec2 user then only we can use docker as a ec2 user so for that the command is user mode hyphen ag docker and then ec2 user that command will provide permission to ec2 user to use the docker just copy that particular command because the security is then running so we have to provide the permission specifically then only we can use the docker so that is the command so we have provided the permission to the ec2 user to use the docker software now we can use the login as a ec2 user and then we have to start the docker service so currently we have as a login as a root user just exit it and now we have login as a ec2 user so docker is successfully installed now but we have to start the docker service and then only we will start the container so starting the docker service the command is sudo service docker start that is the command we can run the service is started successfully and if we type docker ps command then you are able to see that the currently no container is present the docker is started but currently we don't have any containers present so we have to create a fresh container and deploy the tomcat inside it and then we will start deploying the war file to start the tomcat container we have the command that is the the sudo docker run and then we have to provide the name of the container for then we have to dash dash name name is tomcat in our case and then the which port we have to run we know the tomcat is running on the default port 8080 and because if we are running that tomcat inside the particular 
container so that 8080 port is for that particular vm inside that particular vm we are running the docker so that 8080 port is for the docker that's why we have to provide p port 8080 that is for the particular vm and that is for the docker software so that, that's why we have to provide 8080 colon 8080 and then the image name that is the tomcat colon latest so it will let download the latest tomcat image and create the container for us just press the enter so i think it's starting the docker server just give me a minute so it successfully created the container that contains the tomcat now we have to access the tomcat and then we have to perform some operations so for that we have to go inside that particular container to go inside that particular container this command called docker exec hyphen it and then we have to provide the name of the container is tomcat and then slash bin slash bash we put now we are inside the particular container so previously we are working inside a ec2 user and then working inside the vm now we have created the container successfully that contain the tomcat and now we have moved inside the particular tomcat container now if you put ls hyphen a then you are able to see that webs folder is there for the tomcat and one more folder is called webs dot dist so if you go to the term webs folder again cd dot webs and go type ls hyphen a you are able to see this empty but by default if you install the tom tomcat then it will provide some default folders are there but we have installed the tomcat image so in the case of tomcat image the webs folder are, is empty the all the file that is required for the tomcat is present inside the webs.dist file in the case of image so just move to the folder cd webs.dist and if you type ls hyphen a here then you are able to see all the folder that is required to tomcat to start like root docs example and all these things that is preside inside the webs.dist folder not inside the webs folder but we require all the things present inside the webs only then only our tomcat will start working so in the case if you install tomcat directly then it will come inside the webs folder but if you install the tomcat image then in that case it will come inside the webs.dist folder so we have to move that particular folders to webs.dish to webs then only our tomcat will get started for that we have the we already know the for the moving the copying the folder we have command called cp to so cp hyphen r is for the copying the recursively and then we have to move all the files so if you want to move all the files then we can say dot slash star and where we want to move that particular file to the webs folder so we can say web apps right just uh, press enter sorry we have to provide the complete path for the webs folder not that so just we have to type user and then local and then tomcat and then inside the tomcat we have folder called webfs so the path is user local tomcat and then webfs just press enter it's moved successfully now if you press cd dot dot and move to the folder cd webfs and then ls hyphen a now you are able to see all the folders that is required to start the tomcat is present and if you want to access the tomcat is working or not just to open the browser copy your machine ip address and just type ip colon 8080 so, so tomcat is successfully started and you are able to see that uh, tomcat default home page is there so whatever we have did 
Till now, we have installed the Docker, provide the permission as a EC2 user, then start the Docker service. Then we have created a container for the Tomcat, and then we will move the file from the webapp.dist folder to webapps because in the image by default, this comes inside the webapps.dist folder, but we require all the file inside the webapps folder only. Then only our Tomcat will start. So we have moved. The next action is we have to deploy that particular var file inside that particular webapps folder then only that deployment will become completed so for that we know that we have the var file ready but inside the ec2 user so for that just exit it and inside the ec2 user if you type ls hyphen a we have that particular webapp.var file now we may have to move this particular webapp.var file to inside the docker container for the normal copy we have the command called cp but if you want to copy inside the docker container then we have to provide the command called docker cp docker cp and then which file we have to move then we have to move the file called web app dot war file and where we have to move that particular war file that we have to also provide so then we have to provide that particular path for that file of so that file is we have to move to the container called name is tomcat the container name and then colon and then exit path exit part is user local then tomcat and then web apps slash web app dot var just cross check that particular file the docker cp webapp.war file and the name of the container and then user local tomcat webapps folder inside the webapps folder we want to deploy this particular webapp.war file so the command is come corrected just press enter it's done and if you move again to the, that particular container docker exet hyphen it and then the name of the container is tomcat sorry and then slash win slash dash that's it and if you type ls hyphen a and move to the web apps folder cd web apps and then ls hyphen a you are able to see this particular webapp.war file is present and if you want to exit the same using the url just the tomcat is there just open the slash web app so this the web file is deployed and we are able to see the message this is a project for created for the type of practice so so in this lecture we have installed the docker successfully and then we have provided the permission and then we have cre created the docker container and installed the tomcat in it and then we have made the tomcat ready to move that particular file into the webapps folder and then we will copy the particular webapp dot file into inside the tomcat webapps folder and then our deployment is complete in the next lecture we will create a docker file and do this all these process automatically in this lecture we have do, do, do the, all the things manually in the next lecture we will create a docker file and then do the deployment automatically using the docker file so that's all for this lecture if you have any questions or query you can reach out to me on the linkedin and the next lecture we will continue with the docker file for the automatic deployment so thank you thanks for your time thanks so much.